So if you thought the product rule was a little bit complex with things all happening, when you're dividing two functions, the quotient rule is even a little bit more complex. So again, we're going to color code things here. We're starting with one function on the top and another function on the bottom. And so we keep the bottom one the same. Now it's important in the order because you're subtracting on top. So you have to keep the bottom one the same first. Multiply by the derivative of the top one. And then instead of adding like the product rule in the quotient rule, you subtract. Then you keep the top one the same and multiply by the derivative of the bottom one. So it's very similar to the product rule in that one is the same multiplied by the derivative of the other one. The only difference is you're subtracting instead of adding. And you have to know that you start with the bottom one staying the same. And then that's all divided by the bottom one stays the same, but then you square the bottom one. So that's one notation, again, in Leibniz notation, which is the same idea. Again, we'll color code it. You keep the bottom one the same, multiply by the derivative of the top one, then you keep the top one the same, multiplied by the derivative of the bottom one, and then it's all over the bottom one squared. So the hard part, since you don't have a formula sheet, is remembering these things. Because once you've got it, once you remember it, then it's just a matter of applying that to the equation. So here's an example. Find the derivative of x cubed over 3x minus 7. Color coding things, here's our function on our top, here's the function on the bottom. So our derivative will equal, keep the bottom one the same, multiply by the derivative of the top one. Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared minus, keep the top one the same, multiplied by the derivative of the bottom one, which is just 3, all over the bottom one squared. So if we'd highlight what we've done here, here's our bottom one. Here's our bottom one. Here's our top one. The things that aren't highlighted are the derivatives of the other one, and of course, squaring at the end on the bottom. Now, when you take calculus in university, you might be required to prove why it is that these product rules and quotient rules work. But for the most part, you have to know them and know how to use them so that you can get your derivative from any function. Sort of where we're leaning. We're trying to get places where no matter what function that's given to us, we can find the derivative of that. So we started off with our power rule. Then a product rule, you could always multiply out to use your power rule. But with the product rule, it goes a little bit faster. Same thing with quotient rule. You could think of ways to simplify this, but it's going to be faster if we can use our quotient. Especially when they get big, like this one. So again, we've got our function. We've got the top of our function here, bottom of our function there. So our derivative. Keep the bottom one the same. Multiply by the derivative of the top one. And the derivative of the top one, you can do the derivative of each thing separately. And then keep the top one the same. And then multiply by the derivative of the bottom one. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Oh, perfect. I have lots of room. Derivative of the bottom one will be 3 minus 28x cubed all over the 
the bottom squared. So color coding things in this one. Here we have our bottom one. Here we have our bottom one. Here we have our top one. Keep one the same, multiply by the derivative of the other one, then subtract. Keep the other one the same, multiply by the derivative of the other one over the bottom one squared. Find the gradient of the tangent to this at x equals negative 1, and then find the equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 1. So we want to find the slope at a specific point. So first we're going to need to find the derivative, and then we're going to have to plug in x equals negative 1 to find the slope at that particular point. And then after that, we're going to find our equation of our tangent line. So the derivative gives us the equation of all slopes. So if we start by finding our derivative, that's going to give us the equation for all slopes at any value of x. Since it's a quotient, we're going to use our quotient rule. Keep the bottom one the same. Multiply by the derivative of the top one. Subtract, keep the top one the same. Multiply by the derivative of the bottom one over the bottom one squared. Now that gives us the equation for all the slopes of all the tangents. If we want to find out what happens at x equals minus 1, well, we could plug in minus 1 for all of the x's. I'm going to do it bracket by bracket. Can you see that first set of brackets when you put in a minus 1 is going to be 2? 1 plus 1. The second one is going to be 3. The first, third one is going to be a negative 1, and this will be a negative 2. Plug in negative 1 there, you're going to get 1 plus 1, 2, all squared will be 4. Simplifying this, the top is going to be 6 minus 2, which is 4, divided by 4, so we find out that the slope of the tangent line at x equals negative 1 is equal to 1. Now, to find the equation of the tangent line, you need two things. The first thing that you need is your slope, which we already just figured out was 1. The second thing that you're going to need is a point. To find an equation of line, you need a slope and a point. As far as the point goes, we know that the x-coordinate is negative 1. In order to find the y-coordinate, well, we have to go back to our equation and say, I know that my equation is x cubed over x squared plus 1. If I plug in negative 1 into my original equation, I'm going to get negative 1 on the top, 2 on the bottom. That means that my y coordinate is negative 1 half. Now you can choose what you want to do, y equals mx plus b. So I'll still do both ways. To remind you of both ways to find an equation of a line, if you use y equals mx plus b, you plug in m for m and your point when x is negative 1, y is negative 1 half, and from that, you simplify and solve for b. You're going to get b is equal to a half. So your equation is y equals x plus a half. If you use the other equation, the other equation says 
plug in your slope. Plug in your point. So I'm going to get y plus a half equals x plus 1. If I subtract the half on both sides, I get the same equation of my tangent line, no matter which way that I worked on it. Now, in your textbook, as I said earlier, often your answers are simplified or in a different form than if you just did your quotient rule or just did your product rule and saw your answer. So they become a lot of questions that are sort of like mini proofs. You do the first step, but when you check your answer at the back of the book, it doesn't match up. So then you have to use your algebra skills to see if you can make it match. So this question is kind of designed like that. Right? I've got my original function here. And in the back of the book, the answer key says that this is the answer. So it's my job to see, can I make my derivative match up with what the answer key is? Because my first step, they're not going to be exactly the same. But then after that, how would I manipulate things to make it work? So in this question, if this is my original function, I'm going to find my derivative. It's a quotient rule. So I keep the bottom the same, multiply by the derivative of the top, minus keep the top the same, multiply by the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. Now, I check the back of the book, and then it's like, oh, they've simplified it. But I look at some things. I want it to look like this. Can you see the bottom's already good? The bottom already matches up. So it's just a matter of working with the top. I can expand things. If I multiply out the first ones, I'm going to get x squared, 2x squared, sorry, minus 3x plus 4x will be plus x minus 6 minus all of this. So it'll be minus x squared. That negative is going to get distributed all the way through. So I've expanded everything. Now I can combine my like terms. 2x squared minus x squared will be x squared. x plus 3x is plus 4x. Minus 6 minus 1 is minus 7. And now that I simplified the top, I look back at my question and hope it matches up. Whew, it does. So there we've matched it up. And then after that, it says find all the values of x where the derivative is undefined. So dy dx is undefined or not possible when x equals negative 2. Because if it's equal to negative 2, you're going to be dividing by 0, and that's bad. So it's only undefined when x is equal to negative 2. Um, just like the last part, I'll give you the last 10, 15 minutes to work on that. Uh, look at your homework, either question 1e or question 1f. Those are good ones to think about doing that, show that. Okay. So 1e and 1f, work on those ones, look at the answer key, and see if you can get them to match up.